Hey gang, welcome to your ninth CSS grid tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about grid areas. So arguably one of the coolest things about CSS grid is that we can have grid template areas. And instead of me trying to explain what this means because I'll probably fail, um, I just want to dive into an example which hopefully will show you how to use them because they are freaking awesome, right? So. The first thing you'll notice is that I've still got this div with an ID of content. That's our grid wrapper. Then we have these six tags inside it, header, main section, aside, nav, footer. Now, the styles are pretty much the same as all the other videos when we start displaying grid on the content div right here. And then anything within that content div, anything that's a direct descendant is given a background of this blue color and a padding of 30 pixels. So we have a grid kind of set up. But at the minute, everything's stacking one on top of the other. Now, I want to create a grid that maybe has, say, four columns that are all the same width, right? So let us first add in the grid hyphen template hyphen columns property. And this is going to be the repeat function. We want to repeat something four times, and it's going to be one fraction each. So each column is the same width. The next thing I want to do is give each row a certain height or a minimum height. So I'll say grid auto rows and by the way i generally just do this so that the rows are big enough so that you can see there's no other particular reason i'm giving it a min height of 100 pixels or something like that but anyway we'll say min max and then oops don't know what i've done there open the git panel let's get rid of it and inside here we want to say 100 pixels for the minimum and auto for the max in case there's any content inside one of them all right cool so now we have that row height and we want to start placing these different elements inside this grid in different places. Now, the way we're going to do this is not how we'd generally do it over the past few tutorials where we've said grid column start or grid column is one to five or grid row is one to three, etc. We're going to use grid template areas. So the idea is that we give each one of these different elements that we're going to position on the grid um, a grid area name. And then we position that grid area name inside this grid. So first of all, let's give each one of these a grid area name. And we do this via CSS. So we'll say header and give this a property of grid hyphen area. And we're going to set this equal to whatever we want to call this area that we're putting it in. Right. And this is all going to make sense in a minute. Now, we don't have to pass this into quotations like a string or anything like that. We just call it right here header. Right. So I'm going to call this grid area for the header tag header. Makes sense, right? So I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the other things down here. So I'll say main and this is going to have a grid hyphen area of main and same thing for section grid area section. And then same thing for what have we got after section? We've got a side nav and footer. So I'll say a side and then grid area is going to be a side and this might not make much sense at the minute but i promise you in about 60 more seconds it's all going to click into place so grid area for this is going to be called nav so i'm just calling them the names of the tags here but you don't have to call them that you can call them whatever you want for example this one here footer i could say grid area is called my grid area but you know whatever you want to call it so I'm just calling them the same names as the tag because it's easy for me to remember. But anyway, now what we've done is assigned each of these different tags a grid area name, right? So now we can place these kind of grid areas onto the grid where we want to. And the way we distribute these different grid areas onto the grid is pretty simple. So all we need to do is come up to the grid itself, the grid wrapper, and we're going to use a property called grid template area. So we'll say grid hyphen template hyphen areas okay now our grid has four columns right and however many rows that we need so what we can do now is spread out these different elements over these four columns now what i'm going to do is a string for each different row right and on each row what i'm going to do is say what i want to appear in each column right so there's four columns so if i want for example the header to go all the way across the top, right? So over each of the four columns, then I can say in here for the first row, header, 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 and header. So 
each one of these is a column, right? So I'm saying I want a header in the first column, header in the second, header in the third, header in the fourth. So now I can go on to the second row and I can say, well, okay, what do I want in the second row? Well, on the left, I want the aside and I'll have the aside on the left again. So the first two columns, we have asides, which is this grid area down here, right? Then after a side, I want the main and the main. So on the right side of the second column, we have the main. So let's save this so far and see what happens. So we can see header, header, aside, main, right? Now it doesn't look brilliant yet. And you're going to find out why that is in a minute. It's just because we've not finished assigning these different things. But next, we'll go into the next row. And I'll say on the left, I'd like the nav. Then I want the nav again, then main, then main. So the main is going over two rows right here. It's going on the right side of the second row and the right side of the third row, okay? Underneath this, I want another row, and this time we'll have the section, 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 and section. I remember these are the grid areas I'm putting in right here, whatever we've named them right here. So this section refers to this, and we're giving that a grid area name of section, and then we're placing that name in this row right so i don't just want this over one row i want it over two rows so i'll do another for, uh, row full of sections section 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 okay and then underneath that we'll do one more row and this is going to be for the footer and we'll span that across the whole row as well all right so now i'm going to put a semicolon at the end of this because it's just a, a css a property value at the end of the day we put semicolons at the end of them right and I'm going to save this and let's see what happens over here so now you can see we have the header at the top then we have the side on the left nav on the left the main section of footer I'm going to just add a grid gap into this grid so you can see this a little more clearly so grid gap is going to be 10 pixels all the way around save that okay so now we can see this take shape wherever we've placed those grid areas inside this thing they appear on the screen which is freaking awesome so we're essentially dictating our layout using these grid template areas. We can visualize the layout right there. How simple is that? That is awesome. Now, say for example, you want to leave a certain space, um, I don't know, without any content in it. Okay, so vacant if you like. Well, the way we can do that using these grid template areas is instead of assigning a particular column um, a grid name, like a side here, we can place a period or a full stop, however you want to call that. And we can do the same down here. So instead of the aside and now being in the second column now, there's just going to be a space. It's not going to be filled. So we can save that and view it over here. And now we get that gap, right? So that's how we add blank spaces, if you like, into the grid. So I don't know about you, but I think this is absolutely amazing. The fact that we can control the whole layout using these grid areas. We don't have to position anything, float anything, start messing around with the margin or position relative to offset anything. We're just dictating the whole layout using these strings right here. So the reason we have four, again, four names is because we have four columns, but if we want, we could have eight columns and we could carry this on, you know, eight times. So we've got eight headers at the top or six mains and two asides, you know, so they all add up to eight each row, right? We've got four. But that's the basic premise. And then each row has a new string inside quotations. I lay it out like this because it looks easy on the eye, but you can start it up here if you wish. Uh, but I always go down to the next line and uh, keep it looking nice like this. So there we go. That's how we use grid areas to create a layout in the web page. In the next tutorial, we're going to take it one step further and see how we can adapt this kind of grid layout for mobile devices, if you like, or smaller screens, so that it changes depending on the width of the browser.